Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a casino inspired nail design and it all has come from this plate. It's Maniology M302 and it's basically a plate around Vegas and casinos and making that money <laughs> playing gambling I guess. <laughs> so um, I've been on a little drive through my stamping plates as you might possibly know already depending on which video order I upload but I already mentioned it in one of my other videos but I've been going through my stamping plates and I've been picking out plates I've not used before and kind of possibly also themed plates such as this one and bringing them out and basically forcing myself to do something with them finally <laughs> so this was one of them I got it I was obsessed with it when I saw it on the website but it's one of those where it comes and then you look at it and go oh goodness I don't know what I'm gonna do with it and you know my little method has clearly worked because I managed to do something with it <laughs> it's not um my most favorite but I really love the ombre stamping technique that I used in today's video which I really wanted to show you guys so I decided to still upload today and show you guys this nail design. So we're going to start off with applying some simple colours. We've only got a white and a red today. I was trying to stick to the classic colours. You could definitely take a, a different route or when I was looking on the website the way I think yeah I think the way Maniology showed different ways of doing it. There was one picture where they've done a bit more of a vintage vibe a matte kind of pale nudes and browns and kind of like a more vintage looking um color choices but yeah today i went for just a, 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 a well it will be a white a red and a black the black will come later on when it comes to stamping and some hand and nail art and all of that kind of stuff so i'm going to apply my base colors i'll pop it into the lamp we've got four white one red and we're going straight into our stamping as you can see i already tried something and it didn't work so i'm redoing it um as you can see on the white little paper towel that i've got there so what you want to do when it comes to the ombre is place the two colors on your palette and whilst it's wet you want to use quite a large amount of polish and you want to scrape it a few times to create that beautiful blend in the middle there we are so um i'm sure with practice i'll get better this is me this you know i'm fairly new to ombres i reckon so you know with practice it's going to come a bit easier but i felt you know it's not too bad i was pretty pretty happy with what i've done and i'll show you guys how i tackled this full cover image on the long stiletto nail just in a second. So I'm going to stamp this in the center because I wanted the ombre to be focused in the center. So we are going to have some white at the top and at the bottom. There we are. And you can really see how well the ombre ombre <laughs> um, once you place it on the nail. So we're going to restamp. And the way Maniology works, they are literally amazing. They make it so easy to restamp a full cover image together which is what we're going to do now so here you don't have to focus too well on actually blending you mainly want to focus on the area that you want to restamp to make it align perfectly so you want to make sure you're putting the red whether it's at the top or at the bottom but you want to make sure you're placing it on the right area so that when you align it it works perfectly so here we're going to align the red Press it down firmly. There we are. And it almost looks like it wasn't connected. Of course, there's always going to be some human error. I know that some of mine might not end up looking perfect. But to be honest, this one came out pretty well, I think. I was really, really happy with it. So we're going to repeat this exact same process for the other nail, for white nail. But we're going to flip it. So we're going to have the black at the top and then the red at the bottom. Same thing applies. You want to you be quite generous. Um, I've noticed that when I try to ombre, if I place too little polish, I have the hardest time to ombre on the plate and it's just a mess and it just doesn't ombre and I just have two harsh lines <laughs> and that's not what you want to do. Here I use a lint remover to help me kind of get rid of any excess to isolate the image. Um, sometimes I use my stamping card but um, the polish dries quite quickly and I find that sometimes the using my actual scraper doesn't work so I have to use my little lint remover and I would literally never think that I will go through that many lint removers in my lifetime but it's literally proven to be so handy when stamping so I really highly suggest getting some I know you can get some that are supposedly specifically made for stamping but it's literally nothing more than just a simple lint remover so if I were you I wouldn't overpay for anything crazy just go to or just find the Possibly the cheapest lint remover is literally just a sticky tape. <laughs> or you can, yeah, actually, you can also use some sticky tape. I've seen people use sticky tapes. Anything that just will help you remove it. 
and just make your life so much easier when stamping. So here we're just going to finish up our second nail, looking beautiful. This one isn't as seamless as the other one <laughs> when it comes to kind of joining the images together, but it's fine, um, you know, human error, I guess. <laughs> um, especially as when you do it on a client, if you ever do, of course, most likely, um, the likelihood of someone having this wide and long of a nail is quite slim <laughs> unless you're working on strictly just long nails so it will be just so much easier to ombre on someone's nails and you most likely will not have to double stamp a full image together so here i've decided to pick up the cards i really wanted to incorporate it into the set here and i decided to reverse stamp this one so what we're going to do is place some white on our palette well, for me, the palette is a scraper. And then using a nail art brush, um, it can be any nail art brush. I like the one where it's not too short, but not too long, long, whether that means anything to you. I actually don't know how long this one is, so I won't be able to tell you, but hopefully by looking, you might be able to guess roughly what I'm using. I have before used a super short one, but yeah, I didn't find that one the best, and personally. When it comes to reverse stamping, top tip will be do not drag your brush directly on the stamper. You kind of want to float it. Feel free to use a slightly more stamping polish than you would usually. It's fine. Um, you will notice that I will end up having some wrinkling in today's stamping design on this design in particular. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe because I did use too much stamping polish. Who knows? Maybe, it, maybe it's the method in which I stamped. Maybe um, I was a bit too harsh or I wobbled my hand around and I smudged it a bit. Or maybe the stamping polish itself wasn't dry enough and I was already stamping. Who knows what I did wrong, but it was slightly smudged. But before, whenever I do this technique, it doesn't happen. So I'm not quite sure. If you know, let me know in the comments what I could have done wrong. Um, so I can learn from it and not make it happen, happen again. So I'm just going to colour the whole thing in. I have cut it a little bit. My hand clearly is shaking there, as you can see. Um, but we've covered the whole thing together. And then we're going to stamp it on the red nail. And I will have to double stamp it, but I do ahead and do that off camera, I believe. I'll just kind of show you guys the final results and me just placing it onto the nail. Um, it's a very repetitive process. It is quite time consuming, but it's definitely worth it. Especially as when, in my opinion anyways, when you're doing someone's nails, I feel like having the ability to adjust colours and make certain images fit the colour choices that your client wants is literally amazing and it really opens such a wide variety of designs that you can do. Stickers are fun but they're quite, you know, you get the colours and you can't really do anything about those or the sizes and all of that stuff so stamping has really just been so nice for me to play about with. So there we go, we've got our nail done. Looking alright, it's slightly smudged but I mean what can I have done worse? I mean, you know, I've done my best, <laughs> that's all that matters, as long as you do your best is all that matters so the next two nails are going to be well are going to be the kind of designs that you get on the play cards i'm not very familiar with gambling cards i don't really do any of that stuff so i don't really know what to call these but this one is going to be a heart here using some black glitter bells unbelievable gel and i'm just going to do a heart so i'm going to start off with two dots no, not too far away from each other, but still not too close. Kind of, you want that to be at the top of your heart. And then you want to just connect them with some lines and you've got a beautiful heart. It's the best way I've ever done a heart. It's the most easiest way. I really recommend this way to do your hearts. And then I'm going to colour it in. I will off camera kind of thicken it up a little bit and then cure it. So now that it is cured, we're going to pick up the K for King. And we're going to place it at the top on the left hand side and at the bottom on the right hand side to kind of mimic a card, a playing card. You're going to wipe it and repeat it and we're going to do the same thing on the other white nail. But instead of it being black, we're going to use red and instead of it being a heart, we're going to do a diamond instead. There's those other images, but I was like, oh goodness, it's going to be so hard to do that heart with the little lines sticking out or the kind of whatever it is the other thing here i wanted to leave this bit in here to show you guys that sometimes it doesn't pick up perfectly i am not perfect in stamping stamping is almost like a playing game i feel like i might be wrong but it feels like sometimes no matter how long you've been doing it there are sometimes ways where you pick it up and it's wrong you've you know you had a bit of a heavy hand scraping or something happens and it's absolutely normal don't feel like all of my videos that i always pick it up perfectly there's it's never like that <laughs> it's never ever like that so now it's time for the other nails here i'll show you guys how i kind of planned it i've done it on the center 
done my first line across and then I'll do a, a line going from the top to the bottom there we are and then off camera I quickly kind of neaten up my lines make some longer make some shorter depending what I want there we are a bit more symmetrical and now I connect the lines together to create the diamond shape and then I color it in and I like, pop it into the lamps that's the bit I ended up just cutting out I don't even think I actually did it on camera it was just a pain I needed to do it off camera and have it right at my face so I can see what I'm doing so now that I've got that done and cured make sure you cure your glitter bells gels in the lamp for 60 seconds otherwise they will not cure the super pigmented they're made for nail art so make sure you do that I will have a dis discount code in the description for you um, I believe it saves you some money off, so make sure you go check them out. They're literally amazing for now, and you don't have to be a professional to buy them, which is always a massive plus. So again, we're going to pick up an A for an ace, and then we're going to pop it bottom right-hand side, and then we'll be able to top coat these. So today we don't have any glitter, what is a shocker, and then we also don't have any crystals, which is also a shocker. It feels like those two are my big things, of course. Glitter for sure. Crystals are sometimes a hit and miss. I sometimes include them, sometimes I don't, but today we have neither of those, so it's a strictly stamping design which is probably going to go up on our stamping wednesday so happy wednesday everyone so we are now going to play our top coat so it's going to be a matte top coat today we are using my vanilla matte top coat i am slowly running away uh, running out of it here i managed to smudge a bit maybe because i was messing about a little bit too much here um oh it's probably because i actually had some black on my brush clearly because we're working with red <laughs> you probably should have seen my face i was like huh how did that happen? So yeah, I was just trying to brush and brush and brush and then started starting, you know, smudging the red around. So I was like, right, I'm going to have to leave how it is, I'm afraid, and move on. So sometimes I manage to smudge and I get on my brush and I forget about it or I don't wipe it in time. I'm a very forgetful per person most of the time, so I'm sure I managed to smudge it and I told myself I'm going to wipe the brush and I completely forgot and put it right back in the bottle. Very bad, bad practice there, please don't do that because you end up doing what I just did and just slightly mess up your design. So I'm going to pop it into the lamp for 60 seconds and then we'll have the final results which are here. So here it is, I love the ombre, ombre, bre, bre, bleh, bleh, ombre blend of the stamping i really really love it especially the left one the right one is a bit patchy <laughs> i could have done i think a little bit better but i love the left one here so i hope you guys liked this video if you did please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i would love to see you all in my next video bye guys